Hi, and welcome to my guide. Today we will be completing the quest Beneath Cursed Sands. The quest requirement is contact and the set requirements are 62 agility as well as 55 crafting and fire making. Items needed. A coal, an iron bar and any raw or cooked meat or you could replace that meat with 5 GP. Then for the recommended items are between 2 and 3 stamina potions depending on your agility level as well as how much you weigh. Then also some armor and weapon to kill a combat 119, 174 and 379 which are all weak to ranged so I suggest using ranged. And then for the final boss which is 351 combat he is weak to melee. And I'm gonna be banking before the final boss fight to change to my melee gear. Then I suggest you to also bring along an antidote or an anti-poison potion. Then also three or four water skins to protect yourself against the desert heat. Or you could replace the water skins by simply equipping a desert amulet 4. Then about four empty inventory slots would also be very helpful. And for the rest of the inventory just bring along some very good food and potions because basically at the start of the quest we're already going to be starting our first demi boss fight of a comet 174 for the teleports not too many i'm going to be bringing along two teleports to narda one is also good enough and then one teleport to sophonum from narda so you could bring along a pharaoh scepter or bring along some coins for the carpet rides so where to start this quest is here in sophonum here at the crafting market, let's talk to Jamila and select option 2 and then 1. After speaking to her, let's run southeast. Go behind the buildings until you see a door sign, the exit of Sofenum. Go through the gate and then go east, northeast. Until you see some big rocks on your minimap. Keep going east until you can't go any further, until you see a mining site. From there, go north, they'll see a big alcove with an NPC inside. Talk to Mesa and select option 1 to start your first cutscene. and she will take you inside the necropolis. All right, let's have a look around and go south using your minimap. Your character will be running around the buildings following the dirt path. Keep following the dirt path until you see a pyramid and try to inspect the blocked entry. Go on top of the pyramid Inspect the entry. Next, you should speak to any citizen or guard, doesn't matter. And this will trigger the first demi boss fight. It is pretty simple. Simply do not use protection prayers. Using augury and eagle eye is no problem. Just do not use protect from melee. This NPC is constantly attacking you, so you cannot use the rocks or the NPCs to block the Manify God. You will need to fight this guy head on. Once you've defeated the head guard, there will be another cutscene. After this cutscene is over, we will need to run north to exit Necropolis. So 
so just simply follow the dirt path all the way north until you see some rubble, which is the entrance of Necropolis. You could go back to Sophonum and rebank, grab some more water skins, stamina potions or food if you want to. Because next we will need to fight the first boss as well as two mages, which are all weak to ranged. Once you've made it to the rubble, let's first pick up the spade which is lying basically next to it and then climb over the rubble. Be sure that you have your spade. If you think you are ready to fight two mages as well as the first boss fight, let's go back to Mesa's camp, located just north of here. Let's talk to her. After speaking to her, behind her they will find some camping equipment. We will need to search this to grab a tinderbox. So after the fade to black, let's grab a tinderbox from the equipment and then run south. Keep running south until you can't go any further, till you pass the mining site. Then follow the passageway going east around the mountains and then go all the way up north until you see some steps. Climb up those steps and then continue going north. There you should see a furnace. Inspect the furnace and select one twice. Once you've done that, next to you you'll find a well. Search it and then go back south. Go back to the steps and continue running south. We have now just passed a circle of broken pillars. We will need to stand south of those. So there's first an empty spot with broken pillars. Once you're south of the circle of broken pillars, inspect the stone tablet, then close it and then dig with your spade to find a chest. Open it and then type in 111-8513. Enter. Now we'll find a mold. Next, we will need to use this mold on the furnace just up north. Alright, use the mold on the furnace, select option 1 to make an emblem. Next, let's go north, and on the way north you may drop your spade and tinderbox that is not needed anymore, and then use the emblem on the pillar. Select option 1, and you'll see some UI. Rotate the scarab until the head faces downward, then click on confirm to open the entry just west of you. Climb down to start your second battle against two Comet 119 Scarab Mages. Simply use Protect from Magic and you should take no damage except from maybe the scarms they will form. You can simply ignore the Scarabs or kill them. Doesn't really matter, depends on how much damage you take from the swarms. Once you've defeated the two mages, let's go down one of the two staircases. Next, we will need to avoid some darts, much like the sepulchre. The first one is pretty easy, there's a path of three squares and there's just one darts or projectiles running towards you. Run west to the center and try to avoid getting hit by the darts. Once you've made it to the center, you can go north or south, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna go north. 
If you get hit, you will just take up to 10 damage and get stunned for 3 seconds. Once you've made it north or south, just follow the dots all the way to the end. And at the eastern wall, you'll find a lever. Once you've pulled it, you will start a timer and you will need to make your way all the way on the other side of the temple. So click the lever and make your way as fast as possible to the other side. I suggest you to just hope for the best and just get hit by some projectiles. Trying to avoid getting hit by the projectiles is just a waste of time to be honest. By the time you figure out how to avoid the projectile and make the movement to avoid the projectile, that will take too much time and then your timer will just run out. If your timer has run out, you will simply need to pull the northern or the southern lever once again and then make your way to the other side of the dungeon as fast as possible. So if you've made it back in time to the second lever, all the projectiles will have stopped firing. Just go back to the center and then open the western door. Here will be the most difficult part of this quest. First off, let's go to the southwestern corner and inspect this plaque to receive four emblems. Next up, go to the northwestern plaque and read it. And what is written on here is almost random for everyone. The most important sentences that you will need to read is the third one. To the one that arrived first, he offered a dot dot dot. This could be four things, linen, necklace, wine or carving. So for me, the one that arrived first got a carving. So for me, the first one is scarab. This is random for everyone what is written here. Then the second sentence you need to pay attention to is just a couple, just a couple of sentences downward. The one from the far south arrived last, just after the one offered some linen. So I'm just going to be writing down last is baboon. This is wrong, but this is just a trick of this puzzle. So once you have written down your first is one goddess, the last one is another goddess. Right. Once you know these, I suggest you to use your first goddess. For me, it was scarab and put it in the third urn from the north. Then your last goddess, for me it was baboon, the linen one. For you it could be something else, just put it in the second urn from the north. Now there are just two more emblems and two more urns. I'm gonna first heal up, because this is a 50-50 chance. I'm just gonna be putting human last and crocodile first. This is just 50-50 and I'm just gonna be pulling the lever just west. If I take damage, oh, if you fail, you will get hit up to 40 damage as well as be poisoned and have some of your stats reduced. If that happens, just simply go back to the most southern and the most northern urn and just switch the two emblems inside of both urns and then try again. Right, didn't really expect to hit the 50-50 mark, but anyway, let's open the door and they'll find an NPC. This is a ghost, you don't need a ghost speak amulet, but simply talk to it. Then on the western side you should find a urn. After the conversation is over with the ghost, the urn will be searchable. Once the urn is searchable, click on it to find a key. Next, let's go back, all the way back to the first level. We're basically in level 2 right now, so let's go back all the way east, back up the stairs to level 1 of the dungeon. After you've made it upstairs, you will need to make a decision for yourself. 
and ask yourself, do you have enough supplies to be able to kill the first boss of this quest? If not, make your way back all the way to Sophonum, bank, re-gear, resupply, and then go all the way back, unlock the door, and then you will start the first boss fight. If you think you are ready to fight the first boss, which has a max hit of 24 and the special attacks has a max hit of 40, then unlock the western door to start the cutscene. The first boss is a mage, so use protect from magic and run around the room. I suggest you to run around the room, let her see all the corners of the room, so the boss will only use magic and try to avoid the melee attacks. While you're running around the room, the boss will also have three specials. When the boss says that we are children of shadows, it will spawn a black circle somewhere in the room. Kill it before it explodes and deals massive amounts of damage. The second special attack is kinda like a massive shadow barrage, but instead of a 3x3 square, it has a range of 4x4. And that massive shadow barrage of 4x4 starts from her. So always stay away from her at least 4 tiles away to avoid that special attack. And the third special attack is when it spawns swarms, which will leave around a trail of shadow fire. Do not stand on the fire because then you will take damage. So kill the portals and the swarms as fast as possible and keep running around the room to try to avoid getting hit by the melee as well as trying to avoid the 4x4 shadow barrage attack. Once again, the max hit of her magic and melee is 24 and the special attacks are up to 40. Once you've defeated the first boss out of two of this quest, talk to the High Priest and after the conversation is over, teleport yourself to Nala. If you've completed the quest Spirits of Elit, let's go enter the Northern Room, pray at the statuette to recharge your prayer, hit points and run energy. Once you've done that, let's go south across the market square and go into the herbal shop. Inside, they'll find Mesa. Talk to her. And after speaking to her, we will need to go to the general store to buy some raw, to buy some cooked meat from Kesdim. If you've already brought your cooked meat, then you can avoid this step. Right, once Mesa has the pallet, let's go to the general store and buy one 
cooked meat. Next, let's run west. And keep running west until you've hit the corner of the river of Eladinis, just south of Polnivnich. Or just keep running west until you see a river. There, at the corner of the river, they should find a stepping stone. Right click and use your cooked meat on the crocodile. Keep pressing the spacebar and select option 1. Next, cross the stepping stone and on the island you'll find a lily. Pick it. And then make your way back to Nada. You could run all the way back or just simply teleport. Let's go back to Zahur in the Herblo shop and let's talk to Mesa. After speaking to Mesa, let's go to the southern table and use the chemistry table. Here you'll find this user interface. Increase the second bar all the way to the top. After you've done that, decrease the second bar all the way back down. Increase left five times. Increase the center five times. Then decrease the right twice. And then decrease the center one all the way to the top. There you go. Once Mesa has a pilot to Necropolis, we will need to make our way to Sophenum to deliver the Cure Crate. You can simply use the Pharaoh Scepter to teleport yourself to the Pyramid Plunder minigame in Sophenum, or use the Carpet Rites to Polnifniche, and from Polnifniche you can use a Carpet Rite to Sophenum. Once you've made it to Sophonum, let's go to the High Priest just south of Pyramid Plunder, where you've completed Contact Quest as well as Ecolonus Little Helper. Let's talk to the High Priest to deliver the Cure Crate. After we've delivered this, let's go to the Bank of Sophonum to prepare for the final boss fight and basically complete this quest. So, let's go to the bank and prepare for the boss fight. This is against a combat 351, which basically only uses melee. And it will also have two special attacks, which can deal up to 70 damage. The combat 351 is also weak to all melee styles, so just bring your best melee setup. The boss only uses melee, but it will also have a minion which uses ranged and magic. The boss's max hit is 22 and the minion's max hit with ranged and magic is also 22. So I'm gonna be bringing along some tank gear to tank magic and ranged and just gonna be using protect for melee. And then also a ring swap and I think this is a good medium level setup to use. Next up, for the infantry, I'm just gonna be bringing along one stamina potion. You don't need the antidote or anti-poison anymore. What I am gonna be bringing along is one water skin. The other one is not needed. Also, you don't need any more coins. One emergency teleport would be helpful, maybe. As for the rest of the infantry, that can simply be food and potions. 
to be honest, the first boss fight was more difficult than the second boss fight when I did it on my other account. So once you think you are ready for the second boss fight, let's go to Necropolis. You can go there by exiting Sophonum Southeast, and there you should find the rubble to go to Necropolis. Once you've climbed over the rubble and you're following the path, you should be passing Misa. Once you talk to her, the boss fight will start. I suggest you to use Protect from Melee at all times and also pay close attention to the boss. If it starts twitching, then you will need to run behind or next to it immediately, because when it stops twitching, it will fire a lot of lightnings in the quadrant you're standing in, as well as the tile you're currently standing on. So simply run behind or next to it and you should not be hit by the lightning. The second special attack is when it switches places with its shadow form. Once it does that, quickly, as fast as possible, make your way back to the original boss and not the shadow form, because after 2 seconds, your screen will turn black and you'll get one shot. If you happen to die, you will need to make your way back to Mesa's camp and there you'll find your loot as well as Osman to restart your boss fight. So, melee, piety, and just pay attention to it twitching. If it starts twitching, go stand next to it. Also, stay close to the shade. About two tiles away should be fine. It starts twitching, stay, go stand in another quadrant. Not too close to the shade though. Not too close from the shadow though. Quickly! Dude! 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 What the fuck? I'm attacking the cunt. Okay, do not do that then. What the flying fuck? Oh my god! Alright, once you've defeated the boss, we'll simply need to make our way to Sophonum to complete our quest. And congratulations, you've completed Beneath Cursed Lands quest. You are awarded with 2 quest points, 20,000 agility experience, access to the Tomb of a Mascot, Karis Potson, 
The circlet of water, which is basically a wieldable water skin charged with water runes, access to the fairing code AKP, which is next to Necropolis, as well as a new teleport on the Pharaoh's Scepter to Joltevel's teleport, which will teleport you to the obelisk in Necropolis. Alright, this was my guide how to complete Beneath Cursed Sands quest. Hopefully it has helped. Subscribe, rate and comment. Okay, thanks, bye. Thanks, bye.